Now we're going to look at another voting method. Three candidates, A, B, and C, are running for mayor of a small town. The results of the election are shown in the following preference table. This time, we want to determine the winner using the pairwise comparison method. Now, notice that we have three candidates, and we're going to pick up those three candidates pairwise. So we're going to be looking for a combination of three items taken two at a time. We can find that by multiplying three times two and then dividing by two. So we're going to have six divided by two equals three different pairings that we're going to have to consider. Let's go ahead and continue with this now. To do our three pairings, we're going to look at A versus B. Then we'll look at A versus C. And finally, look at B versus C. So let's begin. We're going to take each column individually and decide where to put the votes when we only look at the two candidates at a time. We'll start with candidate A versus candidate B. In our first column, we note that A is ranked above B, so we're going to apply the 1,200 votes to candidate A. In our next column, A is also ranked above B. We'll apply the 900 votes to candidate A. In the third column, B is ranked above A, so we're going to apply the 900 votes to B. And in our last column, B is ranked above A, so we'll apply the 600 votes to candidate B. Now let's total this. We have 2,100 for A, 1,500 for B. So we'll declare A the winner in this pairwise competition. Now let's go to our next pairing, A versus C. We use the same procedure again. A is going to be ranked above C in our first column of votes, and so we're going to have 1,200 going to A. In our second column of votes, we have C ranked above A, so we're going to apply the 900 votes to C. In our third column, C is ranked above A, the 900 votes will go to C. In our last column, A is ranked above C, and so the 600 votes go to A. Adding gives us 1,800 for A and 1,800 for C, which means we end up with a tie. We'll come back to that. Now let's look at B versus C. We're going to have, in our first column, B ranked above C, so that's 1,200 votes for B. In our next column, C is ranked above B, that'll be 900 votes for C. In our third column of votes, B is ranked above C, so we'll have 900 votes for B. And in our last column, B is ranked above C, so we'll have 600 votes for B. Combining, we'll have 2,100 plus 600, which will be 2,700 for B, and 900 for C. So we see that B will be the winner in that pairing. Now we're going to add up points. Every time a candidate wins a pairing, we'll give that candidate one point. If we have a tie, as we do in the middle, each candidate will receive one half point. So let's go ahead and look at our point totals for each candidate. Candidate A has a win from our first pairing, so that would be one point, plus half of a point from the tie. So A will end up with 1.5 points. For candidate B, we have a win in the last column and no other points that we'll end up giving B, so B will have only one point. For candidate C, we only have the tie in the middle, so C we'll end up getting one half point. Now, one thing to note is that we had three pairings and we can double check that we have the correct number of points by adding together the points at the end and we should end up with three points as we do. To determine the winner, we are going to choose the candidate with the most number of points at the end of this pairing and notice that that would be candidate A. So A will be the winner.